Hello mortals, welcome back to the 8-Bit Embassy with me, 8-Bit Ambassador, but perhaps I should rename it the 16-Bit Embassy today in honour of today's subject. So today we are looking at the Commodore Amiga, uh, the finest, easily the finest computer ever made. It wasn't my first computer, but it definitely was the best. Broke new ground in so many new ways, but if you're an Amiga fan, you already know all that. So about two years ago, this, the Amiga Mini, I'm not a giant, this is the mini version, this was released. And then shortly after, the great Paul Vince saw some potential there, and he created a, an amazing program for the mini. So it's at a front end that categorizes all the games, everything's there. I mean, I mean everything. We've got magazines, demos, all the games. Some stuff that's been developed since by, by fans. It's all there, and he's put a fantastic amount of work into it. And it was so popular that it was shortly exported to other systems like the Pi. Um, and we're very lucky that it was also exported to RetroArch, which means that we can run that on our Elite V2 system. So this is one for the hardcore fans. The Elite V2 has fantastic support for the Amiga. One of the reasons I bought it in the first place, all the games you're going to want are there, both the Amiga and the Amiga CD32. However, if you're a hardcore fan, you're going to want demos, you're going to want magazines, you're going to want the fan produced stuff, all of the stuff that you may remember passed around in the playground on floppy disks. It's all available courtesy of Paul Vince. Now, Paul never charges for this, but I think it's good and proper to go to the guy a coffee. He puts an awful amount of work into this. Uh, it's on version 2.5 already, and there's another update coming in a few weeks. So if you do use this and you enjoy it and you're going to continue using it, shoot the guy a coffee. It's only fair, I think. Anyway, it sounds like it's complicated. It isn't. It's very easy to install. I'll show you how. So the first thing to do, if you're very interested in Amiga and getting this system working, join the Facebook group Amiga Game Selector. So there's no lamers, and if you're an Amiga fan, you'll know what that means. There's no lamers on this group. Everyone is very happy to support each other and it's a fantastic group but what you need to go to is the files section now here you'll see a lot of files uh, and it's only the latest versions of the AGS and maybe game selector that are available you need to make sure you get the right one because you've got versions for the real hardware you've got the Amiga Mini you've got WinUAE uh, you've got the Raspberry Pi but the one we are interested in is this one AGS RHW Retro Arch because that's what the V2 is running in the background. So download that torrent and then download that torrent. Now it's, a, it's well seeded usually, so it only took me about 10 minutes to download it, even though it was a torrent and it was about, I can't remember, I think it was about 7 or 8 gigs. So once you've downloaded the torrent, you'll have a zip file which is about, I think, 7 or 8 gigabytes. And then when you unzip that, you will end up with this folder. And you see it's got three readme files plus this hefty 16 gigabyte file here. AGS RHW RA. So that's the file that brings the magic to the V2. So now you've got the file that you need. It's just a simple matter of getting it onto the Elite V2. And if you've ever added your own games, it's pretty much identical to that to start with. So you need keyboard and mouse connected and you need your device with the file on, whatever that is, hard drive, memory stick, whatever. So from this top screen, press F1, and then connect your hard drive or memory stick, and you should see it appear on the left. Bingo. Here it is. So double click that. Now, in that folder, you don't need these, these are just the readmes and that. Familiarise yourself if you want to get to know how to use the system and everything, but what you need to do is copy that big folder, that file there, 16 gigabytes, and then go to ROMs, and then go to the Amiga folder, the Amiga 1200. Now, there are several different Amiga folders, make sure you put it in Amiga 1200, then right click click paste and then wait while it copies that 16 gigabyte folder over go make yourself a cup of tea it takes about 10 minutes now once that's finished copying very important don't 
forget to eject your drive that you've copied the file, file from. Eject it and physically remove it as I have just done. Otherwise, when you reboot the system, you'll have a problem. Now, go to File, top left, Close Window. And we're back here. Now, one last step before the magic can happen. Go to Game Settings, Update Games List, and say yes, because you really want to do it. We are not mucking about. And that's it for the install. Now we just have to find it. So go to Amiga and then scroll down. Actually, we'll take a shortcut. Find it in here somewhere. AGS RHW. So I'm going to favorite that so I can find it easy next time. And then Fingers crossed because we're going to launch it for the first time. Now this had me worried the first time. I thought it hadn't worked. You do get a black screen for quite a while. And then behold. Amiga goodness. Now I get that. It doesn't seem to do anything, so they just cancel it. You can just leave it there if you want. Please take notice of that. Paul Vince developed this all on his lonesome. And here we are. Welcome to AGS, Amiga Game Selector. So, I wouldn't want to deprive you of the pleasure of digging around and seeing what's on here. It's a, You can lose days to this, I'm sure. Uh, but I'm not going to be able to do it justice anyway in the short amount of time I've got to show you this. Um, but here we go, we've got other emulators there which you're not probably going to be interested in because you've already got those on the V2. Um, there are extra games, now this is definitely worth looking at. There's lots of PD games in here, unreleased stuff. Um, so check those out because that's, uh, that's, that's a lovely little treasure trove there. All the games are sorted into various categories to make it really easy to find what you want. You've obviously got the A to Z. Adult games, if that floats your boat, AGA, beta, genre, publisher, systems, by year. Um, and this is interesting because, oh, that's by theme, sorry, by year, you can see it's still being developed for. There's still games coming out. Uh, and it's the Amiga scene is alive and well. But not just games, we've also got demos, we've got if you had Amiga back in the day, you were in. The, you, you had some demos, you know. Some of them you would have kept hold of. There's magazines here, and if we keep scrolling down, there's themes. Now let's make this look a little bit more Amiga than it already is. Wow, there we go, right in the feels. Now that looks like an Amiga, right? <laughs> um, Familiarise yourself with the with the manuals. There's loads of stuff doing. Obviously, there's a home row, and full credit is to Paul Vince, who's worked phenomenally hard on this labour of love. So do consider if you if you're installing this and you're using it and you love it, send him a cup of coffee or three, because I think that's only fair. He's still supporting this. There's a new version of this coming out in a few weeks, um, and he's earned every penny of anything you want to send him. Um, so please do that if you are using it. He's never going to charge for it. But um, yeah, he does does this all for the fun. And yeah, should we play something just to show you? So let's go with Zool, an Amiga favourite. Now the other good thing about this is all of the games have been configured to work fine. Great. I mean, Amiga emulation is quite tricky. And it's hard. You've got to configure every file sometimes to get certain games don't like running properly. Um, but everything's been through, and we know everything's going to work. Is optimized. So a lot of focus has gone in from the community to make sure these games run as well as they possibly can, which in this case. Is perfect, and I think you'll find that to be the case 
with most of the games. I'm not doing. I never liked this game. I don't know why I picked Zool, just because it was. Uh, but there we go. Look at that. Now, when you want to quit a game, you open your keyboard with the select button and press F10. And then you quit it back to here. And it's a simple folder structure to get back out. And there you go. And best thing yet, if you've had enough of this, this is a front end within a front end. So you quit it like you'd quit any other game. So you hot button and start. And then you're back here. Um, there we go. And you can just get on, go from that to anything else you want. How incredible is that? The best keeps getting better. I love this system. Take it easy.